we're going to come over and go into the inventory of items. So the contents inventory is divided up into contents inventory, which you see right there. We call that the information window, the inventory of items. That's where we're going to define the areas and actually do the estimate. And the inventory summary is very similar to the total page within a building. It adds everything up. So we're going to go right into the inventory of items and I'm going to create an area. Remember, there's no dimensions associated to an area. I'm just going to call this Danny's Man Cave. As I select on it, click OK. As I do that, I could have hit scope and it would have uh, went right into it, but I'm going to double click on Danny's Man Cave from the area listing screen and then that launches us into the contents VSS screen. Here's our furniture uh, components all the way down to pack out. These are called the cat categories. So as I click on this, you'll see that it, it will bring up the items associated to that category. If you take a look over in the far right, you can see that anything that I have picked up, like for example, bread maker, or if, let's go to coffee maker here for just a second. So if I click on coffee maker, then you can see that I have on level two and level three, we have automatic drip and a percolator, large capacity, one cup, espresso, and under the counter. So as it, the building is very it's similar with the way contents has done it, is that there are three levels to the database. Okay, level one is very generic. Level two is a little bit more detailed and level three is the most accurate. You probably want to, want to know what those numbers represent. Uh, let me tell you, it's a little bit different from the building, okay? What these numbers represent is the high cost of the item is scope number one, scope number two is an average cost, three is a low cost, four is a repair and recondition, this one is going to be a heavy clean, and six is just a regular clean. There is no uh, stripping and finish. It depends um, what type of item it is. If it's a table, you might have a scope number seven. Scope number eight is an appearance allowance, um, and a zero is going to be a custom item that you can use. We're all going to go through that. So basically what I'm going to do here is if I um, – want to find a certain item, I can navigate through, for example, some furniture. If I click on the furniture, come down to, let's say, bookcase. I select it. I have the ability to either use level one right here on the bookcase. So as you can see, this one does not have a level two or three. So that's the only, um, lot, the only level that I can go to. So if I need to do a high cost on the bookcase, as you can see, uh, it automatically highlights that. And take a look down here in the bottom. It'll say replace bookcase. And, it, and one thing that we need to add will be the age. Because when we add the age, it should do the depreciation for us. If you take a look, there's the depreciation that automatically calculated based upon the economic age of the bookcase. I can put in any comments on here. As you can see, the sales tax has been computed and inserted uh, based upon the zip code of the loss. And here I can put in, for example, Kincaid, model number. And if there was a serial number that I can, I can put that in. There's an override screen, which means that I can bring up a separate override screen which is just an enhanced screen that has every single facet or field box uh, for, this, for this item. So you can see I can put the make model serial number. I can also address salvage. Now that's a big thing for carriers because if they can get back at uh, some, some uh, amounts based on the loss, uh, then it actually makes you look really well. So for example, and this is not, if you have a salver on the job, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an insured buyback. So it's a net, you're going to get paid net claim payable, and then you're going to then subtract the salvage, and that's what the insured would get. So let's say that if I have, for example, um, in this case, I have $1,058.94. That includes a sales tax that's embedded in the cost. 
because that's how I set it up. When we go into sales tax, I'll show you that feature. I can then come up and say, well, I want to take $100 off. So now I can do that for every line item and then I can get a salvage report when I print the estimate. So it automatically comes up and does the math for me. I've got the, if it's depreciation recoverable or non-recoverable is available. And also I can hit print specifications if warranted. Put a note in. And then click on done. So that's how we can put in the line items. We can also use the search key, which is right up here. And I really recommend that because sometimes if you're trying to find hard to find items, uh, let's say that we're trying to find a hanging swag lamp. If anybody knows what that is, hanging, I'll just put that in. Now, see how I've got hanging swag lamp, but I only put in hanging. So as I click on that, it will automatically find it. I'll double click on this, finds it, and then apply the appropriate method of operation to this. So if I want to use an average cost, I can do that. Remember, do not forget about the age. So as you can see that the depreciation is then applied from that. Um, if I don't know make model serial number, I leave that blank and then I continue on. So it's important that you know how to manipulate in the, into the VSS, which is actually a very easy interface. Uh, first of all, you can come up and then select the appropriate category, which gets you in the area. And then if you just look over here on the far right for the entire database, it will then come up and find it for you. Then select the method of operation and address any of the make model serial number and age, but it's crucial that you put the age in. All right. So once we have that, that's actually pretty easy to do. You keep doing that same thing over until you're done with all with all the entries. So um, there are.